Hello again and welcome back to another Wise and Unreal tutorial where today we're going to be using animations to play events that we create in Wise in Unreal. As you can see, I've got the Unreal third person little practice project set up and ready to go. And my plan is I want to add footstep sounds to this little fella here. So every time he takes a step, I want an event to trigger and then play a sound of a foot stepping. Before we start, just a quick heads up, if in any of these Unreal and Wise tutorials, you want to copy the blueprints or the assets I create, well you can if you go to scottgamesounds.com. Here you can quickly find links underneath all of the video lessons and just download the assets and then you can install them directly into your own project. So it's nice and easy to follow along. But with that out of the way, let's crack on. Let's not waste any time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our wise project now what i've done is i've created a random container which you can do inside the audio tab of the project explorer uh in the default uh sorry designer layout create a random container so just click on default work unit and click random container to do that and i'm going to use this to play random footstep files that i've imported into wise now we've done this quite a few times now already on this channel, so if you want to learn how to import audio into Wise, just hit the card in the top right corner for a lesson on how to do that. Uh, but let me quickly show you what I've got. So I've got this random container. Uh, let's go to the general settings and let me play you it quickly. So as you can hear, it just plays a random footstep every time we trigger it. All I've done is just added a little bit of volume and pitch modulation, so things sound a little bit different every time. Uh, and that's pretty much it, really. So, uh, once I created my random container, I created a, an event in the event tab called Footsteps, which we're going to use in Unreal later. And I've just set it up so that whenever this event is triggered, it's going to tell my random container to play one of those sounds. Then finally, if I go to Layouts and go to Sound Bank, uh, I created a main sound bank, which you do uh, by clicking new and just typing in the name. Dragged my event onto that sound bank and assigned it. And then uh, made sure I checked the platform I want to build these files for and the language. And I hit generate all. Again, we've done all this before and I don't want to keep repeating myself <laughs> every time I make these tutorials. But it's dead easy. And like I said, check out some old videos if you don't quite know or you're not too sure how to do that. So yeah, nice and easy on the wise side, let's jump into Unreal. So first we wanna make sure our bank and our event are imported into Unreal. So I've created a wise audio folder, just double click on that. And I'm gonna be a bit lazy, I'm not gonna bother putting it in the Windows folder. <laughs> I'm just gonna right click, go Audio Kinetic, I'm gonna start by creating an Audio Kinetic bank and we're gonna call this the exact same name that we called our bank in wise. For me, that was main. Then we're going to want to go right click again, uh, audio kinetic and audio kinetic event. Again, exact same name. So my event was called footsteps. Then on the event, let's double click on it and let's tell it which bank we want uh, Unreal to search for to find this event. Then let's hit save, close this window. Uh, let's also make sure we save the bank itself. So click save there. Then the last thing to do is right click the bank, hit generate sound bank. And this is basically going to regenerate the files. Remember, a sound bank is a file that has our audio files encrypted within it. Unreal is going to read it. Oh, wait for the bing. There we go. <laughs> that bing just tells us that everything imported correctly. So yeah, sound banks are basically files that contain our audio encrypted. Uh, and then Unreal can then uh, read them and play them in our game. Uh, what I like to do is make sure I check everything worked correctly. So I'm going to right click on my event and hit play event. We hear a footstep, brilliant, so it worked. Okay, cool, so we've got our audio in our game, but now we need to tell it to play uh, when our player takes a footstep. Essentially, we wanna sync it up with the animation. First, we need to find the uh, file, or the animation itself, within our game. Uh, so if you're using the third person project like I am, you're gonna to wanna to go to the mannequin folder, animations, and then you'll wanna select this one here, third person animation blueprint. It's the one with a little orange line underneath it. Double click on that once you've found it. Okay, so you should be brought to a window like this. This is the event graph. Uh, and as you can see, it looks very very familiar to all the blueprint event graphs that we've been looking at so far. And that's pretty much, that's because it is really, it's the same thing. It's, it's, the difference is that this allows you to interact with the animation specifically. 
Uh, cool, so once you've come to this window, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually find the specific animation we want to trigger our footsteps. And that is the running animation, and if you want, a walking animation. So the top right corner, click on animation, and you'll be brought to a new window like this. Uh, in the bottom right corner, you'll then want to browse the animations that are attached to this beautiful mannequin here. So for us, we want third person run, so double click on that. And as you can see, it brings us to the animation. Now, what we've got at the bottom is a timeline. This is kind of showing the animation as it plays. What we're going to want to do is pause that, so click on the little pause menu here. And we're going to want to take this little red box and we want to drag it through our animation. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold right click and I'm just going to use W, A, S and D so we can get a, a, good, a good view. There we go, that'll do. Uh, let's then drag the red box along and basically we want to find the specific frames when our mannequin takes a step because that's where we want to trigger our sound to play. So just slowly move that red box along until you find the footsteps about there. In fact, I'm going to put mine a little bit before, just about there. Uh, once you've done that, you'll then want to go to the notifies uh, sort of line here at the top, and you're going to want to create a notify. Now, what a notify is, uh, it's basically a trigger, essentially. It's like a call. Uh, when we create a notify, we're also going to create an event that we can then trigger within our animation blueprint we just saw. And as we already know from previous videos, we can use an we can use events to trigger specific behavior. Uh, in our case, we want an event to trigger the sound of a footstep playing. Uh, so let's do that. Let's create a notify. So I'm gonna right click, add notify. Uh, and then to create a new photo, no, there, to create a new notify, you just click new notify here and give it a name. So let's right click and click play uh, footstep sound. Now I think I've already created one, so this might, oh no, it works, there we go, play footstep sound. I thought I'd already created a notify of the same name and I was worried it was gonna break something, but it worked, so we're all good. Uh, next, let's run through our uh, animation timeline again. Let's find the second step, so about there. And let's do the same thing, let's add the same notify. So let's go skeleton notifies, or search for the name, it's up to you. And then uh, find the same notify you created. And then let's save this animation. Uh, so let's go over, let's go back to our blueprint window now. So let's go to the top right corner and click blueprint. Okay, so back in the event graph tab, we're just gonna find some empty space and we're gonna right click and we're gonna search for that notify we just created. So I'm gonna type its name, which was play foot step. There we go, play foot step sound. So it's gonna look something like this, event, animation, notify, and then the name of the notify you created. So let's click on that. And then just like we've done before, we're going to use the uh, pin here, the execute pin of the event, and we're gonna drag a line, and then we're going to search for Wise's post, I can't remember what it's called now, post event uh, node. And what this does, it allows us to play our sounds. So once you've uh, got to your post event node, you're gonna to wanna to go to AK event and pick the event you want to play. So we want to play our footsteps event. Finally, we want to say where in our game world we want this sound to be played. Now we've looked at in a previous tutorial, if I quickly go back to Wise and click on my uh, random container, we've looked in previous tutorials how we can create position attenuation or distance attenuation in the positioning tab of any of our containers. And what that does is it, make, it it applies changes to the volume and the pitch, sorry, not the pitch, the panning of your events so that when they're played back in your game, they can sound quite distant as if they're coming from a specific point. So for example, if we were doing this for an enemy, an enemy animation of an enemy running, you want to make sure that the event is going to play by the enemy and that the sound of the footsteps is going to drop in volume as the player moves away from them. But luckily, because we're using a player, it's nice and easy. We don't have to add any attenuation in Wise. But what we do have to do, let's go back to our uh, blueprint, is we wanna use this actor pin and say what actor we want to attach uh, this event to. So let's drag a line off of it. Now, normally, if we are attaching a sound to the same object we're editing the blueprint of, we would just type self and that would pop up with a little node saying reference to self. But for animations, we wanna search for something different. We wanna search for get owning actor, which is under the animations tab here. So click on that. And as you can see, it's going to target self basically, this actor. So this these animations are obviously attached to an actor object 
uh, in our game, which is the mannequin. And so by using this, we're basically saying, hey, we want you to play these sounds at the same position. Let's quickly close this. The same position as this actor here. So once you've done that, uh, you're good to go. So come up to the top left corner and hit <laughs> comply, compile rather, to apply those changes. Also hit save just to make sure nothing breaks accidentally. And then you can close this window. Uh, and well, I guess the last thing to do now is, uh, is to test it out, moment of truth. So if we play our game and walk around a bit, Brilliant, we hear footstep sounds. And then once you've done this, uh, if you're using the third person demo project like I am, you can add jumping sounds to the animations, you can add, actually I don't know how many animations there are. Uh, jump, start, there's a few. You can add different sounds basically to all the different animations uh, you've got going on. And with that, that's it for this lesson. So thank you very much for watching as always. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see specifically. Uh, and don't forget to give me one of those <laughs> on the video. And also, if you want to basically download, it, well, not that there was a lot, but if you want to download the asset I created today, uh, just go to this page on my website, which I'll have linked at the bottom of this video or using the card in the top right corner. So, I've been Henry Scott. Thank you very much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next one.